Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm going to be doing a, a different kind of list. Um, I thought this would be kind of interesting. Um, but I'm going to be sharing with you guys the top five books that I personally never want to read um, and have no intention of ever reading. Um, I came up with this idea after chatting with my friend Shannon on Bookstagram. She is um, at Find Me in the Footnotes. I will link that down below. Um, but she had just read a book that is on this list that I truly, truly despise. Um, and I thought it'd be really interesting to talk about books that I am very adamantly uninterested in reading, not because I find them boring, but because I find them too terrifying, too grotesque, or too disturbing based on their premises and concepts. So we're just gonna dive through a little bit of those and see where it goes. Again, if you love these books, that is totally your opinion and power to you because I don't think I could stomach ever reading them. Um, and I know that there are definitely some books on this list that are quite, quite popular with people, but these are just my opinions and yeah, so let's jump right in. So the first book I want to chat about is The Exorcist by William Peter Blatty. Um, I will never touch this book. I will never read this book. I have zero desire to ever look into this book. Um, I know it's like a cult classic. It inspired the film. Um, it's supposed to be one of the best horror novels ever. Um, but I am from DC. I was raised in DC. Um, my friends in high school, we would all hang out on the Exorcist stairs. We would hang out in the canals and in all of the places that a lot of the film was filmed in. Um, this movie, to this day, to me, is the scariest movie that I have ever seen. Um, and I've seen it once, and I have no intention of ever seeing it again. So this is probably the, the simplest reason why I never want to read a book on this list, um, and simply because this, the movie scares me, the concept scares me, the story scares me, and it's set in my hometown, and it's based on a true story. So just all of that combined <laughs> really just isn't something I want to do with my day. I really like reading books and being made scared, but this is something that is one of my irrational fears that has always stuck with me. Always been scared of Reagan from the Exorcist, um, but this is this is like a big, big no from me. Um, I was also raised Catholic, and as a Catholic kid in Catholic school, the number one thing that always scared me was demonic possession. Um, it is one of the only things that really, really unnerves me um, when reading. We'll talk about the few other things that unnerve me on these other books. But yeah, I have zero desire to ever pick this book up. Um, I will read the premise though because I know a lot of um, people probably know it, but there might be some who don't. Um, so it says, um, The Exorcist remains one of the most controversial novels ever written and went on to become a literary phenomenon. It spent 57 weeks on the New York Times bestseller list, 17 consecutively at number one. Inspired by a true story of a child demonic possession in the 1940s, William Peter Blatty created an iconic novel that focuses on Reagan, the 11-year-old daughter of a movie actress residing in Washington, D.C. A small group of overwhelmed yet determined individuals must rescue Reagan from her unspeakable fate, and the drama that ensues is gripping and unfailingly terrifying. Two years after its publication, The Exorcist was, of course, turned into a wildly popular motion picture, garnering 10 Academy Award nominations. I actually didn't know that. It's really interesting. Um, on opening day, the film lines of the novel's fans stretched around city blocks. In Chicago, frustrated moviegoers used a battering ram to gain entry through the double side doors of a theater. In Kansas City, police used tear gas to disperse an impatient crowd who tried to force their way into a cinema. Three major television networks carried footage of these events. CBS's uh, Walter Cronkite devoted almost 10 minutes to the story. The Exorcist was and is more than just a novel and a film. It is a true landmark. Purposely raw and profane, The Exorcist still has the extraordinary ability to disturb readers and cause them to forget that it is just a story. Published here in this beautiful edition, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we get the point. It's a little girl who gets possessed by a demon and all hell breaks loose. That is The Exorcist for my own personal reasons. I just never need to read the book. The movie scared the crap out of me as a kid and I don't need to continue to feel that way. I literally didn't get sleep for like weeks and every time I hear the Exorcist theme song I get really unnerved whenever people post like photos of like Regan <laughs> on Instagram and I accidentally scroll by I get like really upset so I just I don't want to read the Exorcist because I am terrified of it <laughs> um and that that might seem a little childish um but that's fine I'm a, I, I can live with that I don't need that book <laughs> um 
However, the other ones I think have more of a real rooted reason as to why I never want to read them. The next one on my list is the one that Shannon and I had actually been discussing, and it's American Psycho by Brett Easton Ellis. So this book for me, I did actually try to read several years ago, um, and I stopped. I stopped, I'd say maybe halfway through, I'm not 100% sure, and I put it down and I never want to pick it up again. I don't need to finish it. I have zero intention of ever getting through it. Um, and th there's a lot of reasons why. To start off with, I think American Psycho is extremely misogynistic. I think there are levels of satire in it that try and draw home a point, but at the end of the day, there is so much violence and gore simply for the sake of violence and gore. There's also a ton of animal cruelty, um, and I just found the book to be absolutely disgusting. Um, there were so many just nasty moments in the book that didn't serve the purpose or cause that Brett Easton Ellis was trying to, I guess, say with his book. Um, and it was just one of those books that like, I figured reading it would be very similar to the movie. And I, I don't like the movie. Um, I, I can't stand Christian Bale or Jared Leto and I've never liked the premise of the movie. And I thought it was interesting though that we are reading a book with an unreliable narrator so that it first got me to want to really look into it. That's a trope I really, really like in horror. Um, and then the more I got into it, the more crude I found the book to be. And there are levels of gore that if they push a story forward are acceptable. There are levels of murder, there's levels of torture, there's levels even of animal cruelty that push a story forward and to me make sense. Um, this book abused all of that and didn't use any of it for uh, basically nailing down kind of the criticism of like the rich 80s businessman lifestyle that uh, Easton Ellis was attacking. And I just thought it was a very poorly, it was in a very, it was very poor taste. I find that book to be in very poor taste. I know a lot of people like it. Um, my boyfriend loves this novel. It's, he thinks it's very satirical. He totally gets the point and all of the bloody gore and violence doesn't bother him, but it bothers me and I didn't need to keep reading it because I just found it to be disgusting and pointless and just gore and torture porn for the sake of gore and torture porn. The concept of killing something for shock value instead of, again, serving the purpose of a story is cheap horror to me and I, I don't like, uh, I don't like cheap horror. I don't like the idea that um, there, there are tropes such as like rape, pedophilia, um, incest, I've spoken in other videos about that, um, and of course animal cruelty that to me should not be used um, when a horror author can't think of something creative to make it scary. When you just rely on things that are just inherently evil for shock value, you're starting to lose my interest and you're starting to lose the message that is you're trying to portray, at least in my opinion. So yeah, won't ever finish um, American Psycho. I have zero desire to. I had zero desire to read the book in the first place, actually. I'll be perfectly honest. Um, it was given to me and somebody was like, oh, you're, you should read this, you'll really like it. It's like um, dark satirical horror. And I was like, oh, cool, I don't like the movie, maybe I'll like the book, but no. Never gonna touch on it, never gonna finish it, do not care. And then I guess I'll read the premise for people if you haven't read American Psycho. So um, the product description, in American Psycho, Brett Easton Ellis imaginatively explores the incomprehensible depths of madness and captures the insanity of violence in our time or any other. Patrick Bateman moves among the young and trendy in 1980s Manhattan. Young, handsome, and well-educated Bateman earns his fortune on Wall Street by day while spending his nights in ways we cannot begin to fathom. Expressing his true self through torture and murder, Bateman prefigures an apocalyptic horror that no society could bear to confront. Uh, could bear to confront. So, yeah, all right. That's American Psycho. Moving on, we don't really need to talk about that. I feel like almost everybody knows about American Psycho. Okay, now the next three um, might not be as popular. But I'm gonna kind of um, throw the next two together because they're by the same author and I won't read them for the same reasons. And that is The Troop by Nick Cutter and The Deep by Nick Cutter. Um, so I will quickly give y'all 
um, the descriptions of these books. So the troop by Nick Cutter is, uh, once a year, Scoutmaster Tim Riggs leads a troop of boys into the Canadian wilderness for a weekend camping trip. A tradition as comforting and reliable as good ghost story around a roaring bonfire. But when an unexpected intruder stumbles upon their campsite shockingly thin, disturbingly pale, and voraciously hungry, Tim and the boys are exposed to something far more frightening than any tale of terror. The human carrier of a bioengineered nightmare. A horror that spreads faster than fear, a harrowing struggle for survival with no escape from the elements, the infected, or one another. Uh, part Lord of the Flies, part 28 Days Later, and All Consuming. This tightly written, edge of your seat thriller takes you deep into the heart of darkness, where fear feeds on sanity, and terror hungers for more. I'm going to pause for a second and say that that sounds so up my alley, um, that this sounds really, really interesting. Um, Lord of the Flies is one of those books that I had to read in high school and has stuck with me forever. I don't like that book, but I find it very effective in what it does, very disturbing. I really, really, really remember that book vividly, even though I read it 13 years ago or something like that. Um, so this I find very intriguing, but I'm, I'm going to pause and come back as to why I will not read this book. All right, next is The Deep by Nick Cutter. The premise of that book is um, a strange plague called the Gets is decimating humanity on a global scale. It causes people to forget small things at first, like where they left their keys, then the not so small things, like how to drive or the letters of the alphabet. Uh, their bodies forget how to function involuntarily. There is no cure. But far below the surface of the Pacific Ocean, a universal healer hailed as ambrosia has been discovered. In order to study this phenomenon, a special research lab has been built eight miles under the sea surface. But when the station goes incommunicado, a brave few descend through the lightless fathoms in hoping of unraveling the mysteries lurking at those uh, crushing depths, perhaps to encounter an evil blacker than anything one could possibly imagine. And again, this is something that sounds really interesting to me. Um, plague comes, takes over the world, people escape to hide from it in uh, an underground, or sorry, in an underwater facility. It's really cool, it's really unique. Um, I know Nick Cutter is um, very Chuck Palahniuk in his writing from what I've heard. There's a lot of, again, like shock value, I would say in like the level of like Chuck Palahniuk's Haunted from what I've heard as well. And that, that doesn't bother me like that. There's a lot of gross out stuff. He is definitely like a body horror guy. I know the truth is very heavy on um, parasites and extensive body horror and gore. And that's okay. And there are elements of that where like body horror does really give me like, you know, like the heebie-jeebies when I'm reading it. It really grosses me out. And I'm not a fan of reading it, but like if it's in a book, I'm not going to like hate on the book because of that. If it relies almost exclusively on body horror, um, in a way that's not effective in like the way that like um, the movie The Thing is effective, um, then there can be some issues. But when it comes to body horror, it's just, it's, it's, it's there, it's fine, it's there. The reason I won't read any of these Nick Cutter books though is because it is widely known that he loves to feature extremely detailed, extremely drawn out scenes of animal cruelty. Um, so trigger warning, slight spoiler warning. Again, I haven't read these books. These are just what I know about the books. Uh, the troop features a very drawn out, disgusting um, torture scene of a kitten. And the deep, uh, I don't know what happens. I just know that the dog dies and it's in an extremely horrible, unnecessary way. And I, I one, I don't like reading about when dogs die or kittens. Um, but I don't like the fact that this author is now consistently banking on the fact that people know that playing with the emotions of killing pets is a way to get a scare out of somebody or a rise out of somebody. And that to me is, again, it's cheap horror. Um, from what I've heard, it is not done in a tasteful way, the way that, say, like, um, the Will Smith I Am Legend um, movie does it. Spoiler alert, sorry about that. The movie's been out for a while though. Um, so when I hear things like that, that's just something I don't want to read. And I, I get a lot of flack when I talk about this, especially on Reddit, of like, oh, like you'll read books where like people and like characters die, but like you can't read about animals dying. Yes, animals are innocent uh, creatures. They are sweet. They are loving creatures. And I don't need to waste my time reading about a gruesome graphic death for an absolutely all loving innocent creature and anybody who banks on that is just somebody i don't really want to read sorry 
Sorry, Nick Cutter. Just, just not gonna, not gonna get into your stuff over that. Okay, and then last but not least is The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum. So this book came out in 1989, um, and it's, it's, I'll, I'll read the premise for you. Uh, a teenage girl is held captive and brutally tortured by neighborhood children. That's what Amazon says. Um, right, so, okay. The reason I'm never going to read this book is because it is based on the, um, what, what year was it? Uh, the 1965 um, Abuse, Torture, and Murder of Sylvia Likens. So Jack Ketchum pretty much fictionalized, or sorry, not even fictionalized, because a lot of what happens is all real. Um, he novelized the true grotesque torture and murder of a real little girl. And I've heard this book is brilliant. I've heard it's very well done. I've heard it handles the subject matter in a very delicate um, way, in a very respectful way, and in a way that gives the victim a voice um, that she hasn't really had prior. And I respect that, and I don't think Jack Ketchum writes cheap horror. Um, I don't think of Jack Ketchum in the same light that I view Nick Cutter and Brett Easton Ellis, but I don't think I could stomach reading a horror novel based on something so graphic and so gruesome um, and knowing that it all really happened. And that to me is like a level of just like sadness and depression and just a look at like the absolute depravity of humanity that I just don't want to waste my time on. Um, or and not even waste my time on, that I don't want to like spend my time on. I know this case, um, I'm really into true crime, and this is one of the most horrific cases I've ever read. And I just don't think mentally I could sit and read that story. I think it would be like a real a real gut wrencher to me. I think it would make me, it would put me in a very bad place and that is why I don't want to read it. But the fact that Jack Ketchum wrote a novel that has effectively done that to many people who have read that um, does, again, give this victim a voice, does not let her torturers and her murderers off the hook. Um, I highly recommend if you're interested in this case to look into that case and see why it is important that um, Sylvia has a voice now. I believe her name is changed in the novel, but it is very much um, based off of this story. So that is that is one of those books that I just, I understand why people want to read it. I personally don't think I could ever read it. It doesn't make me think less of Jack Ketchum at all, actually. Uh, but I'm actually stunned that he was able to do the research and put her experiences into words because I just, I, every time I read about that case, I am just stunned into sadness. It is such a horrible, horrible thing that happened to that girl. So that is um, a book that I just don't think I could ever pick up. So yeah, well, that got really dark really quickly. But yeah, so there are five books that I just don't ever really want to touch. Um, I would say that The Exorcist, again, I'm just, I'm a scaredy cat. I can't, I can't do it. I just, I know I can't do it. Um, the Girl Next Door, I I just don't think I could stomach that. I think that would really put me in a bad place, as I was saying. And those, to me, are totally valid reasons to not want to read a book. Um, versus The Troop, The Deep, and American Psycho, which I just find to be um, offensive and sadistic and cruel. And so I don't really want to partake in books that, you know, touch on those subjects for no real reasons, it seems to me. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, as always, I will be uploading videos on Mondays and Thursdays. If you enjoy my videos, please hit those like and subscribe buttons down below, and I will catch you all in the next one. Bye.